Welcome one and all to another episode of The Damage Report with me, John Arola, and very lucky to be joined on the show once again by A.B. Burns Tucker. How's it going? Hey, John, how are you? I'm great, mostly because the news is wonderful. It's a delight to wake up and greet the day by loading up Twitter or CNN's website or something. How have you been? You know, I'm living my best life. It's my last semester of law school and I just had a birthday, so we're good. Happy birthday, that's that's Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Uh, a birthday and you'll soon be done with law school. I've heard that it's a difficult thing to do. Absolutely. <laughs> that's what I've heard. Okay, if well. If you heard um, nothing other truth, that's it. Well, uh, pre-congratulations for finishing it in just uh, a few months. And uh, thank you for joining us, very glad to have you here today. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you everyone out there in the audience for being here. You've made a wise decision because we have a lot to talk about. Not only these absolutely damning voicemails and text messages of Andrew Tate. Uh, Candace Owens jumping to defend him mere moments before this damning information comes out. Um, great decisions always by Candace Owens. An update in the Biden document scandal that I think maybe changes things actually. So we're gonna be uh, debating that. And then we've got George Santos's ridiculous stuff and the uh, the former head of the police in Uvalde saying like uh, the, the most reprehensible things. And some fun discussion in the aftermath as well, including positive news when it comes to long COVID. I've been waiting for it, I've got it. Uh, Republicans believing that they've found so, like something that AOC has said finally that has opened the door for them to viciously mock her. I'm going to be evaluating their attempts to do that. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. In, in advance of all that, please hit the like button, share the stream so that people know we're live. And if you want to reach out to uh, AB or myself, you can send us comments, tweets, and super chats, and we'll respond as we go. But with all that said, AB, are you ready to start the show? You know it. Yes, good to hear it. Uh, I do want to give everyone a warning. This first topic is talking about uh, you know content involving sexual assault, rape, those sorts of topics. So consider yourself warned as we go into this. And my take on this is that I do not believe that Andrew Tate is a rapist. I don't. I think that that is what people like to accuse men of when they're trying to take them down, right? Yes, it is what people like to accuse men of when they are trying to take them down or when they've raped them. Those are generally the two big reasons that you would declare that someone is a rapist. And look, I don't know if Andrew Tate did the things that he and his associates are alleged to have done. That's what a legal process is for. But since I know exactly as much about this as Candace Owens does, I've read the same news accounts that she has. It is odd that she would come to this conclusion considering everything he has so very repeatedly and passionately said about this topic. Again, we weren't there, we don't know what was done. But if I did want you to give me the benefit of the doubt when it comes to claims of sexual assault, I probably wouldn't spend years talking about how rape is awesome and women need to be dominated and I love to beat women and those sorts of things. Now she's familiar with all of that. And it's still come to the conclusion that she should defend him. My guess is that it's less to do with the actual content of the accusations and more to do with what she believes to be her position in the right wing and what she as a woman in the right wing needs to say in regards to right wing men. That's just my guess. We're gonna give her a little bit more time to make the case and then we'll jump into a discussion. But Andrew Tate is not hiding exactly who Andrew Tate was, is and always has been and clearly he communicated exactly what it was and whatever it was that he does in Romania to my assistant, giving her the option. Maybe she wants to join. For all I know, maybe in Romania, which may be perhaps the reason he moved to Romania, whatever he was doing, being a modern Hugh Hefner is legal. I'm taking a guess here, I don't know. But if you're a guy and you hold citizenship in America and or in the United Kingdom and you decide to uproot to Romania, it's gotta be because you can do a little more dodgy stuff in Romania, it's the Eastern Corridor. This is how things work, right? Romania is like Ukraine, it's an incredibly corrupt country. The governments are entirely corrupt. Now, the risk that you run is that what you are doing in Ukraine might be legal if your goal is to be a Hugh Hefner and I think that what what he did, I, I believe that Andrew Tate was always upfront with all of these women in the same way that when you go to work for the Playboy Mansion, 
they're pretty upfront with the fact that you're going to be walking around in a bikini wearing bunny ears when Hugh Hefner was alive. I believe he always communicated that and he was always upfront, right? But when you decide to do that in Romania, the risk that you run is that it's Romania. Okay, so it's important that you know that Candace Owens' read of what happened under Hugh Hefner is as uh, fact-free and inherently flawed as her read of what Andrew Tate was up to. And we'll get to the facts on that, but AB, what do you think about what she said? I think that Candace Owens spins in more circles than Britney Spears on Instagram. Um, because everything you just said just just went into a viral circle. Like the reality is that he can be upfront about being misogynistic and being an aggressor and honestly being a rapist, right? But if women don't consent to the behavior, then that is still rape. That is still a crime at the end of the day. In addition to that, she didn't really help his case much. You are saying that, yes, he told us that this is the type of person he is. When someone tells you who they are, you should probably believe them. And then if you have to leave one country to go and commit your crimes in another country because you think you'll be better off there, that's even worse. So at the end of the day, she didn't really help the argument. She just wanted something to say so that her base didn't feel like you know she was ignoring the issue. So they, they had a puppet to throw out and seem like there was a diverse view on this. And there's no diverse view, leave people alone. If we don't consent, if a person doesn't consent to the sexual activity, then you are violating them and that is a crime in whatever country you're in. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And and again, like it isn't just all of the things that he's done that that you we can debate or whatever. It's it's right. individual acts of violent rape, which she is exactly. pretending not to be familiar with. Uh, and and I love her defense. So she's so certain. I think he's innocent because people always make these claims to take men down. And then her defense of him is. Well, I think that that, that maybe the, he said he said the thing, but 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 maybe when he goes to Romania because you can do more shady stuff and you can only get away with it because it's super corrupt there. And obviously, you couldn't do this in a Western country. It's super corrupt, and maybe he did the thing with. You don't seem as sure about what he actually did and whether it's remember because she she's not just talking about just the law here. She's the one with strong ethics and morals. She critiques the other side for their moral and ethical failings. And she's coming up blank on any issues with anything that he's alleged to have done. But let's be very clear about why. I look, I think AB, you launched into this, but she knows what her role is and the difficult position that a lot of women, I think, are forced into if they want to be commentators on the right is you can have whatever opinions you want about a bunch of stuff. But when it comes to the men, you have to be an apologist for all of their worst action statements, impulses, all of that. If she were to critique him, honestly, that could very well be the end of her career. The right wing men that watch her content would turn on her, they would consider her a traitor and all of that. And so I think she is choosing to opine on this to send a strong signal to the right wing men that no, I totally have your back. In the same way that Andrew Tate thinks Women should be brutalized and controlled and manipulated and all that. I am signaling to you that I agree with that. That's what the state of things should be. That's how I read it anyway. Entire thing is disgusting. She didn't have to opine on any of this, she chose to. And I do just wanna add because she decided to randomly throw in her misunderstanding of what the Playboy Mansion was actually like. As if what the women have complained about is that they had to walk around in a bikini and bunny ears. I've got some news for Candace. That's not their chief concern. So Hefner's former girlfriend and Girls Next Door star Holly Madison described the mansion life as cult-like. Madison recalls being drawn in by the promise of sorority and family and also claims that everyone who came to the mansion was photographed and videotaped without their consent, particularly in the bedroom. It is one thing to be told, I'm gonna expect you to walk around in a bikini. It's another thing to have hidden video cameras where you sleep. Also, according to multiple witnesses, Hefner routinely raped playmates while they stayed in the Playboy Mansion, and he wasn't the only one. Many VIP celebrities allegedly raped bunnies and returned to the clubs without their memberships getting revoked because he didn't care about the violent rapes that his guests were getting up to. Again, Candace Owens maybe doesn't know about this because I don't think she does five minutes of research before she goes live. But that is the actual experience that multiple women have attested to there. And so to compare what Andrew Tate did to what was happening there is damning, okay? But not for the people making these accusations against Tate. It's damning for him and for her. AB. 
I mean, in addition to that, she also left her assistant out to hang dry, right? Because if you know that someone is possible predator, I'm not sending any of my people in there to be attacked by him. Um, but at the same time, I think you're also comparing apples to oranges. Like this man has come out on the internet and explicitly said the type of things that he does to these women. And she's just blatantly, blatantly ignoring it. But that's what right wing women do, right? They consistently go against their own better good. We saw this in the last election and they go with the patriarchy and they go with their their men. But this is almost counterproductive to what y'all say y'all stand for. Because if these are Christian values, right, that you stand for and you guys are under God and you guys are supposed to be these moral people, well then taking people against their will is immoral. But I guess y'all did that in slavery too, so I guess that's okay. Or we've been doing it for years, right? So I guess it's just been okay, right, over the years because we've yep. never corrected it. And now it's 2023 and finally the people who have been active in doing this are now getting their justice. If Hugh Hefner was still alive to this day, he'd be sitting right next to Harvey Weinstein in prison. I guarantee you that. So, I mean, her arguments are ridiculous, but I mean, she's getting her money. So, you know, she yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, and she's doing it through basically the same technique that all of these do by by strategically taking the position that reassures the base that they're pure. Hey, I'm as toxic as, as everyone else. Like I'm really purely toxic. Continue giving me money, please, and keep watching me. And also, um, you in the audience, let me know. Are you sick in the same way that I'm sick of having to have fake debates? So the debate that we have to have here is, uh, does she think he did it or not? That's what she's talking about. She doesn't think he did it. And I'm making this video ostensibly to try to convince her that maybe he did. Or the women would give their personal life accounting to convince her that uh, he did. When that is an irrelevant debate because she doesn't care whether he did or not. This is not a debate about the facts. She doesn't care if he violently raped women. And we're supposed to pretend that that's not the case. That this is just about a misunderstanding about the facts and oh, I'm Candace Owens is operating in perfectly good faith. And if more strong evidence comes out, then she'll change her opinion accordingly. No, she doesn't care if he raped people because defending someone that maybe she suspects in her gut is a violent rapist is it is to her benefit in terms of clout and in terms of money and that's absolutely sickening. Why don't we jump right into this next video? Am I a bad person? Because the, the more you didn't like it, the more I enjoyed it. I loved how much you hated it. Turn me on. Why am I like that? Why? I am one of the most dangerous men on this planet. Sometimes you forget exactly how lucky you were to get by me. Would you rather me pin you down and make you do things you didn't like? Or would you rather... You didn't like that I was thinking I can do whatever I want to. That's what it is. I'm the smartest person on this planet. Are you seriously so offended I strangled you a little bit? You didn't pass out. Chill the f out. Jesus Christ. I thought you were cool. So thankfully, uh, Vice World News was able to obtain uh, both text and voice messages, an excerpt of which you just heard from Andrew Tate to one of the women who suffered the profound misfortune of crossing paths with him at some point in her life. And in it, uh, this woman who accuses him of rape in the in the video, he is, or in the audio, he is admitting that he did it, that he did it, he liked doing it, he is proud of it. He then threatens her by pointing out that he's the most dangerous man in the world. Because again, remember, he's completely deranged and has no idea who he or what he is. He is in a voicemail declaring that he raped someone and then declaring that he's one of the smartest men in the world. Because, and, and I need you to bear this in mind, I get that he's influential, that a lot of young pathetic men follow him. But you, what you need to bear in mind is he has not had a unique or original thought in his entire life. He is just clever enough to understand how to con some people and tra transfer their money to his, that's it. Other than that, he's a complete moron. And that is why he inevitably is gonna go down for all this stuff. It isn't just that he is a gross sociopath and that he routinely victimizes people for sexual pleasure, a feeling of power, a, a brief thing that can fill up the obvious hole in his soul, um, but also that he's a complete moron. And he leaves a paper trail, he leaves evidence everywhere he goes, he brags about the crimes he commits. He puts them down on tape and video, and we have more evidence that we're gonna get to AB. But what did you think about that absolutely abhorrent video we just watched? 
Um, I think it doesn't go well for his defense, right? Because his defense is like, oh, I just play this character online. Like, you should not use this against me. This is not the type of person that I am. Well, this wasn't online. This was a personal message that you sent to somebody who you violated, and now it's out there. So, how do you overcome that argument, right? And the Romanian um, authorities are already accusing you of being a lover boy, which, you know, essentially they normally charge crime bosses with, right? The mob boy in there. And they're like, we don't like that what you don't get to do is swoon women and manipulate them into making money for you by using their bodies against their will, right? That is not cool. And so you just validated that for the authorities. So in when you do go down, he's gonna try to convince his base that it's just it's the matrix taking me out. No, baby, it was you. It was the matrix. The matrix ain't nowhere to be found, okay? It was you. It was you. Yeah. Yeah, I would just like to his fans, like if one of you is watching this and you're probably not because you like your bubble, it makes you warm and feel safe and feel loved and all that. So you're probably not gonna be exposed to literally one critical thought about this guy that you worship. Um, what did you think would happen? Like I know the, the, the charges are coming against him, the accusations are coming against him and he says it's the matrix. Let's say hypothetically that he had done these things. What do you think would happen if that were the case? That the charges would come and he would just say, you got me. That's it. I don't have a word in my defense. They're like amazed about the fact that he would claim that he didn't do it, as if every grifter and con man in history hasn't denied that they committed the crimes when presented with the evidence of it. It truly is shocking that it's turned in this direction. But anyway, again, if any of you are here, here's some more inconvenient stuff. Here are text messages that he sent to one of the women he victimized. And I love raping you. And watching you let me while still debating if it's a good idea or not. Monsters are monsters. When you're under my control, I do whatever I please. When someone tells you who they are, listen. He is repeatedly saying it over and over and over in his character as if as if making a character of yourself as a violent rapist is a defense against accusations of rape. I'll never understand that. But even if we gave him that, it is clear that in his private life, he is every bit the rapist monster that he presents himself to be online. And there's way more where that where that began. You can go through on Vice World News, they have an accounting of all of one of the women who's being referred to as Amelia, it's not her real name. Her attempts to try to get the authorities to look into this and the fact that it was stymied at every step and slow rolled and eventually the opportunity was wasted. Finally now, literally years and years later, we might be getting some justice. AB, do you have any uh, final thoughts about this? It's just, it's just so gross. <laughs> It's disgusting. I mean, yeah, this is something that has been pending since like 2015, right? Um, at the end of the day, I think in terms of his base and his followers, right? They have already been manipulated into believing that women are just slow babies and we don't know what we want and we need to be controlled, right? And we don't have the wherewithal to like, even have control over our bodies or say what we want to do. And so you run against that base being like, oh, well, she knew what she was getting into, right? As Candace Owens said, she like, there's some sort of agreement like, oh, well, you know the kind of guy you're dealing with. There's always this victim blaming, right? But you don't blame a victim for being victimized. That's never yeah. a choice. You don't choose to be a victim. Nobody would ever choose to be a victim. You have to be a vicious, nasty individual to victimize somebody this way and take away their dignity as a person um, through sexual abuse. And that's something that sticks with people for a very long time. So his base is raggedy. And the only reason why they follow him is because they can can't get women because if you could get women, you wouldn't have to be talking to somebody like this who just showed you he can't get women. He forcing women to do what they doing in the first place. So that should just yeah. let y'all know y'all didn't get y'all money's worth. Hundred percent. Yeah, they they have to stick with him because they have been indoctrinated to believe that this is their only chance, only by being like fully loyal to him, giving him every cent that you make. Eventually, you can learn to be an exploitative a hole like him. Um, if you're watching this, I would like to reassure you. I know that you're not going to trust me. Uh, there are actually other ways to lead a successful life, to grow personal wealth, find a career that you find satisfying end up in a healthy, satisfying relationship. There are other ways to do that. I would argue the other ways are far more common than being whatever the hell kind of criminal boss he is. The smartest man in the world, like declaring that he's raped someone in text messages and voice memos. He is just Dunning-Kruger with a goatee. How do people not see that at this point?
it's not just that they're saying it's rape. He's saying it's rape. How is that not convincing to you that he might have raped someone when in his view it was non-consensual? Anyway, we're gonna see what happens. They've investigated 10 more of his properties. They've seized a bunch of properties and they say that you know if this goes forward in the way that it looks like it's going to, those are gonna be sold off and the money's gonna be used to compensate the victims, which obviously no amount of money can make good for the trauma that they've experienced. But at least the fact that some of the money that he extracted from them through force, eventually going to them, that feels at least in the, the same neighborhood as justice. And with that said, we're gonna take our first break. We come back, uh, a lot more news to get to, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a few. Damn, the one time Garland acts, it has to be right in anticipation of something I'm saying. Anyway, with that said, why don't we jump into this talk, starting with this. When he was Ed, 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 I'm. We don't need. We don't need to have this. We work very well together. Do. I don't. We don't need to have this kind of confrontation. Ask your question, and I will answer well, them the best the that reason, I can. Part of the reason we're laying that out is because you're laying out your part of the job. We're laying out our part of the job. I know, but I'm just saying that we don't need we to have contention. We don't, you don't need to be contentious with me here, Ed. That is a uh, press secretary, uh, Karine Jean Pierre, uh, facing some tough questioning about the Joe Biden document scandal, which has changed a little bit in the last 24 hours for a couple of different reasons. Uh, the first, this is breaking news that we're just finding out about this. Um, depending on how it's worded, Merrick Garland is considering or will have a special counsel that looks into the Joe Biden document scandal. Uh, that is something that I have said. The current Jack Smith should do if he's investigating Joe Biden for his documents. He could also investigate Joe Biden, or he's investigating Donald Trump. He could also investigate Joe Biden, acknowledging that I think there are and were some significant differences between them. But I also want to throw out that one of the differences is not as different as it was yesterday. And I believe that we should evaluate and change based on the news. So more documents were found at a second location. And initially, when this was reported last night, we didn't know what it was. As of this morning, we now do. Richard Sauber, who's a special counsel of President Biden, said all but one of these documents were found in storage space in the president's Wilmington residence garage. One document consisting of one page was discovered among stored materials in an adjacent room. No documents were found in his beach residence or whatever. And that I think is actually noteworthy. Again, I still haven't seen any reason to believe that he's trying to steal these documents, but and that may matter for prosecution, but we have said one of the differences was that he hadn't taken it to his personal residence. Apparently, they were at his personal residence, so that is different than it was yesterday. And if uh, you know, if Merrick Garland does appoint a special counsel, I think that this is definitely something that should be looked into. Ab, what do you think? Um, so I 100% that believe that it's something we should look into. And I say that just for the peace of the American people, right? Because we went in on Donald Trump for them documents. Now the difference between the two is Donald Trump had 300 and some documents. Biden had about 10, okay? Donald Trump wasn't trying to get them documents up. Biden people was like, uh oh, get, get them out, hot potato, we don't want them, right? So that's a different <laughs> type of energy um, when you're talking about these documents. But I think to keep our politicians honest as possible, right? Um, and to let them know that regardless of who you are and what party you are, the American people are gonna be on your head because you represent us and we need to make sure everything is in order. I think it does need to be investigated. Do I think that it's as criminal as what Trump allegedly had going on? Possibly not, right? Because when you think about the fact that 99% of the documents that were found were like Biden's personal stuff, and then there just happened to be like this box of documents that was found um, in the first location, and then they ended up finding, you know, a few more documents in the other location. At this point, we don't know how classified they were, right? Um, and we know that they came from when he was in VP. And what we also know is that his lawyers gave them up immediately. Trump's lawyer sat there and lied basically and was like, we gave you everything. And then when the FBI ran up in your house and found everything and some, yeah. right, then he felt attacked. So I think that's the difference between the two in terms of how it's being handled. But at the end of the day, if you were derelict of your duties, then you need to be checked about it and you won't play them games no more. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree that I think what happens after the documents have found is still the most fundamental difference between these two cases. 
And unless Biden drastically changes his behavior, that difference is gonna remain because Donald Trump still claims to this day that he should be allowed to keep those documents. And if he still has some, and it is possible that he does, he's not giving them up. Whereas, as with the first location, when they found these in the garage, they immediately gave them back. Now that doesn't necessarily absolve him of what I think there should be liability for if he intentionally stole these documents. And also, I don't think that I disagree a little bit about the number. I'm not saying that the number doesn't matter. But if you stole one really important document, that to me is still a crime. For me, it's more, did you try to hold on to them? Did you keep them when you knew you shouldn't? And that is true of Trump and so far has not been true of Biden. That said, investigate it. And by the way, if he has effectively done the same thing or something similar to what Trump did, if that's the final evaluation of the special counsel, if what they do to Trump is stopping him from running again, then I think that that should be applied to Biden as well. I know that he's the current president and they're super, like they're even more hesitant to investigate the current president or indict them or whatever. I don't agree with that. If Trump is banned for stealing documents, and that is what Joe Biden did, which has not been established yet, then I think the consequence should be the same. That's what I would say. Oh, Galfar is giving us a live. Attorney General Merrick Garland on Thursday appointed Robert Hur as special counsel to investigate the discovery of classified documents that was potentially mishandled following President Biden's tenure as vice president. So this is not a hypothetical, this is actually happening. I think that that's a good call. I don't think that makes this an equivalence like the Republicans are hoping. Um, and I have one more thought about the special counsel that I'll get to when we talk about uh, what Donald Trump has been saying. But anyway, uh, we should treat both sides the same way if what they did is the same thing. Any other thoughts before we move on? I guess the other part about it is that the archives department was not looking for these documents, right? They had never requested them, unlike with Trump. So again, not right. excusing what happened, right? But I think let's just making distinctions between what we are looking at because Republicans, the right wing, love to compare apples to oranges, right? And these are two similar situations, but with different facts. And I think that's what needs to be considered at the end of the day, how it was handled. Now, when you steal something, you have the intent to deprive, right? So when someone immediately gives you something that they realize they have taken, that they don't have no business having in their possession, that's not really stealing, right? Um, now, it also depends on. How did the documents get where they were, right? How did they get transferred to the, to that the office and to the home and things like that? With Trump, just oh, we don't, we just was moving stuff and we just moved it. Like mm -hmm. that's a completely different, you know, situation. Um, but at the same time, like I said, I think I think it's a good thing to appoint someone who is neutral, who's not part of the you know Democratic Party, um, to give people a peace of mind on both sides and to just dispel the BS because at the yeah. end of the day, like I said, these are two different um, scenarios, but they both need to be looked into. And if they did something criminal, need to be reprimanded appropriately. I agree, I agree. Okay, I wanna turn now to uh, you know another interested party in this, Donald Trump, what he's been saying, which is interesting in its own right, but also I think is interesting in how it interacts with what Merrick Garland just announced. So. Uh, here is what Donald Trump had to say about the current document investigation. He bleated, and I'm not gonna read the whole thing because there's a lot here. The special prosecutor assigned to the Get Trump case. And I have to just say, I don't think Merrick Garland should have called it the Get Trump case. I think that was suspicious from the very beginning. So I'm I'm on Trump's side in that. Jack Smith, he puts a question mark like he's questioning if it's his name. It's his name, anyway, is a Trump hating thug whose wife is a serial and open Trump hater, whose friends and other family members are even worse. And as a prosecutor in Europe, according to Rick Grinnell, put a high government official in prison because he was a Trump positive person. Don't talk about yourself like you're a disease someone else can have. How about that? Anyway, he says Smith is known as an unfair savage. What are you talking about? And his best friends with the craziest Trump haters, including Lisa Monaco who runs Injustice. He, that's clever, he's like talking about DOJ, but he calls it injustice. The box is scam is a hoax. No, you took them in the box. That's what really happened. And anyway, he goes on to say in page three of this, he means his third truth. I don't know why he's saying page. Fire a man who may very well turn out to be a criminal, Jack Smith. His conflicts, unfairness, and mental state of derangement make him totally unfit for the job of getting Trump. 
Okay, I don't want to read the rest of it. Um, I love Donald Trump calling someone else deranged. That is very funny. Uh, all that's crazy. I don't know what the he may turn out to be a criminal if that's even his name. But the important thing here going forward is that Merrick Garland has now appointed a special counsel to look into the documents of Joe Biden. And based on these messages from Trump and all of what he said from the beginning, they clearly have an issue. This is a real principle that you cannot investigate someone if you are critical of them in any way. You have to be a massive supporter of them. That's the only way you can fairly investigate them. So I'm gonna be looking at the special counsel. And unless he is super supportive of Joe Biden, I'm gonna be calling for him to be taken out of that position. If he has ever said anything positive about a Republican in his life, then that is clearly unfair. He's a savage, he's deranged, and he needs to be fired. That's what I'm learning, AP. Well, as far as I know, he's gonna have to be a savage and he's gonna have to be deranged because my understanding is that he was point, he was Trump appointed. Um, and so, <laughs> yeah, it's just gonna have to be that. But for some, for Trump to call people savages when half of the people who used to work for you are in prison or doing prison time, didn't your homeboy just get, get, uh, get put in Rikers? That's where don't nobody want to go to Rikers. So you talking about thugs and savages, Rikers, that's the thugs and savages. Your lawyer then went to jail, your accountant then went to jail. Your ex-wife just said, I ain't even, I don't even want to go to jail. I'm just gonna go meet my maker at this point. <laughs> so it's just like you can't be talking about people being savages and thugs and stuff like that. And you a whole kingpin. Yep. Uh thank you, by the way, for you just dropped an important piece of knowledge there. Uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, on November 1st, 2017, her was nominated by President Donald Trump to be the United States Attorney for the District of Maryland. Oh, damn. Well, then I guess that's not fair. He's a savage. He's deranged. Deranged. He's Biden positive. Or so. I don't even know what they're talking about. But um, but this does make him immune to being critiqued by the Republicans, right? Because he got his position. From Donald Trump. So, and this also, since everything's equal, you have a, a Biden deranged guy looking into Trump. Now you have a Trump appointee looking into Biden. We're good, right? We're good on Jack Smith, who might be a criminal, and that might not be his name. I think we're all good at this point. What a dumb story. Anyway, just ban both of them for running from office. Can we get some fresh blood? Can we get President Boebert, please? Anyway, sorry to put that on in the universe. Okay, with that said, we're gonna turn to something different and talk about something even more ridiculous potentially. Let's start off with this video. Now, Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who's been pretty quiet so far, finally commented about this today, telling Fox that Santos will continue to serve, at least for now. The voters are the power. The voters made the decision, and he has a right to serve. If there is something that rises to the occasion that he did something wrong, then we'll deal with that at that time. What are you talking about if? You keep saying the word if. If is a hypothetical that looks into the future. How about you look around yourself, Kevin McCarthy, because he is very much being accused to have done illegal things. I'm not talking about the many lies. Those are reprehensible. Those are below any individual, they should be below any party. And let's be very clear that the only reason you're saying it's totally up to the voters who were lied to is because you want him to remain in his position because you're worried that if he steps down, they'll they'll have a special election and a Democrat will get elected. That's all this is about. There are no values, no principles. It's just about raw power. Um, but for now, there are major concerns about campaign finance. He, we're gonna have to jump around a little bit. I apologize, we're low on time, but in graphic six, he uh, lent his campaign $700,000, okay? Uh, as of 2020, he had reported having $50,000 to his name. How the hell did they make that extra money? Did he get lucky and find some rare Pokemon cards in his garage? How did he get the better part of a million dollars in less than a year and a half to give to his campaign? That's serious, let alone, do I need to remind you that the country Brazil exists? You know what he's alleged to have done. He literally fled the country to evade his legal responsibility. Stop using the word if to describe a situation we're already very much in. AB, what do you think? I don't know if we've talked yet about Santos personally. What do you think about this situation? I, 
Is that his real name? That's where I'm at at this point. Cause like, sir, who really are you? So one of the issues is like, yeah, the voters voted for you, but they voted for you based on the resume that you presented to them. Just like if I get a job, my job's gonna hire me based on the resume I presented to them. But as soon as they figure out that thing, that ain't even me, I didn't do none of that stuff, I'm out the door, right? That's a great so point. The voters don't have your trust anymore, right? They don't trust in you, they don't believe in you anymore. You have shown that you don't even know who you are. So how are you supposed to represent a bunch of people who you don't know in, in addition to that, right? And again, I do think McCarthy, he on thin ice, been on thin ice. He just, he didn't gave up everything but his wife's panties to get that seat. So at this point, he gonna rock with whatever he gotta rock with to make sure <laughs> that he don't lose his position at this point. But I mean, I would be disgusted if I voted for him. And I mean, I don't even know how he just show up at work every day like that. I'll be honest with you. So embarrassing. Yeah, 100%. And the interesting thing about uh, culpability is that uh, when someone does something wrong, initially, they're responsible for it, okay? However, circumstances can be arranged in a way where it starts to reflect poorly on you. Uh, him telling those lies is his problem. You having his back is your problem because you're sending a signal to those voters that you don't give a damn about them. You don't think that they deserve to have an honest accounting of who they might be supporting or opposing. Um, if you found out that I had a producer who was a domestic abuser, okay, that's that person's problem. If I keep them on, it's my problem now. That's how that works when you're a leader. And I know that he's not a true leader. He's, he's, he's got so many strings attached to him now that he's a speaker in name only. But technically, you're supposed to be responsible for your caucus. And by the way, I don't know procedurally that he can oust Santos. So understand what I'm asking and what I'm not asking. I am not saying it's his responsibility unless he gets rid of Santos. That might not be within his power. What is within his power is to denounce him and encourage him to resign, okay? And once you do that, as long as you do it strongly and honestly, then I think you buy yourself some cover. But Kevin McCarthy is not doing that. He's just saying, what are you gonna do? It's up to the people, good luck in a couple of years. I would very much like to have that, that spot in the house uh, leading up to the next two years. That's all that this is. Anyway, um, okay, uh, he sent some ridiculous tweets too. He said, if we could jump to graphic seven, he says, I will not resign. Okay, he, he might not. He might not, but he might might eventually. I would like to see that. And then uh, Adam Kinzinger told him to resign, so he sent this out: "Go on CNN and cry about it." See, some some of these younger politicians are good on social media, and some are just they're phoning it in. Uh, go on literally any news network and lie about it, with it being literally any fact about your life. How about that, George Santos? It's like, oh, oh, what an original thing, showing that photo of Kinzinger and mocking him for crying. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's all the time we have for this block. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, oh God, we gotta check in with the former police chief of Uvalde. We'll be back after this. Okay, everyone buckle up. We're gonna be talking, uh, unfortunately, about uh, police incompetence that resulted in major loss of life. It's an incredibly unfortunate thing. Uh, that said, let's jump into this. My first thought is that we need to we need to vacate. We haven't been we haven't contained, and I know this is horrible. I know this is what our training tells us to do, but we haven't contained. There's probably gonna be some deceased in there, but we don't need any more from out here. So I called out and I said, "Get these kids out." Okay, Whatever I told them, bust those windows, get them out. That is Pete Arredondo, and uh, that footage obtained by CNN shows him talking about why they didn't rush in to stop the shooter in Uvalde. Him saying there, they're dead in there, let's stop people out here from being dead. And I think watching the full video, my interpretation of what he said is subtly different. In that initially, I thought he was specifically just talking about cops. Ostensibly, in that video, he is talking about kids in other rooms. But that said, while I'm acknowledging that, let's also acknowledge that that is some self-serving BS to pretend that no, no, no. We're not rushing in because uh, probably lost cause in there. Uh, we want to stop kids in other rooms from uh, dying. So instead, we're just going to wait outside. You know another way you can stop the kids in other rooms from dying? By rushing into that room and taking out the shooter. That would be one way. 
because if he's not there anymore, if he's dead or uh, you know under police custody, then he's not killing anyone in other rooms. Or and here's the nice benefit of my way of doing things in that room either, because I will remind our viewers that not everyone in the room with the shooter was dead. When they eventually went in there, like hours later, there were three kids that were found injured who eventually died. And maybe in any circumstance they would have died. But I know that the doctors probably would have loved to have had a couple more hours to try to save their lives. But those hours were stolen from them by Pete Arredondo and the decisions that he made. AB, what do you think about this? <laughs> what bothers me is just how casually he said, well, I know that's not in our police training. Like, well then. That should be a problem. I, we were talking about little kids, helpless little kids. You know, another issue I really had with this is the fact that you guys heard this man like reloading his gun and didn't take that opportunity to at least try to go in there and stop him and disarm him. You allowed him to rearm himself, right? And then he's talking about, oh, well, we're gonna bust the windows. But my understanding is that there were like a there was a parent that actually ran in and was breaking kids out of windows and stuff like that. So they just didn't do what they were supposed to do in general. Like we saw the videos of them putting it on hand sanitizer and kicking it in the in the hallway and stuff like that. I mean, like if you're scary, just don't become police. Yeah. Don't apply to be the police if you're scary. You sign up to put your life on the line to protect and serve whoever it is, regardless of their age, their race, their mental capacity anything like that. And y'all didn't do that. So I mean, like his excuses are ridiculous. And just the fact that he could so casually just like tell the story like that, like he's not dead wrong is really abhorrent. And it's like yeah. frustrating to listen to as a parent. Yeah, 100%. You know, you, you referenced the video about the reloading. Why don't, why don't we actually play that? I heard him reload. I, I heard something over the pin. You obviously we all know what that sounds like. Uh, not with a pin, I'm sorry, with a, with a clip. I'm assuming he reloaded, but I know he did something with it. Uh, I did hear that one time. I don't know if it, there was a second. Yeah, uh, that's potentially an opportunity to do something. I mean, it's not a necessary opportunity. You could have gone in long before then, but that is an opportunity when you could have gone in if you had chosen to. He chose not to. And he acknowledges the criticism. He says, we're going to get scrutinized. I'm expecting that. We're getting scrutinized for why we didn't go in there. Yeah, it is weird that people are doing that. It's weird that they have an issue with the fact that you guys just waited outside for hours and hours for the shooter to do literally anything he wants in there. Um, that is weird. Look, um, they might say, I'm sure many of them do say frequently, probably to themselves, their family and friends. Uh, it's easy for you to say that you wouldn't have gone in. And you know what? I probably wouldn't have because that's terrifying. But you'll notice that my uniform doesn't involve a badge. I know that I wouldn't do something like that. So I haven't risked other people's lives by taking the spot of someone who hopefully will do that. And maybe it seems unfair cosmically for a person's entire career to come down to one decision. But that is very much where we're at. You trained and trained and got all opportunities and were given all this power and all of that. And when it mattered most, you made the wrong decision. And whether it's scary or not, that's the job. And we're, when we're continually told as progressives or whatever, like you guys want to change the police, you don't understand that a day's gonna come when you need someone with a gun. Well, if you're gonna make that case, then maybe when that day comes, do the right thing with it. You don't get to have it both ways. You don't get to be the person on the wall who civilization relies on. And when civilization relies on them, you stand in the hallway for hours while kids are butchered. Okay, you gotta choose one of those two things. And unfortunately, Pete Arredondo did. Final thought, AB, before we move on. I mean, I'm a mom, so I probably, if my baby was in there, I'm running in there. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> like, I'm going to get my kid at the end of the day. Um, and quite frankly, he's lucky I'm not a parent in Uvalde because he wouldn't have to worry about getting criticized because I would have came all across his face <laughs> because people <laughs> lost their children because you, you were, you didn't do your job at the end of the day. Um, and you get to get blamed for this because you signed up for this job. You applied, you took the test, you went through the interview process, you went through the, 
um, whatever psychological process you went through police training like you you had a lot of opportunities to be like this probably ain't for me right like you had a lot of simulations to say I'm probably not gonna run in if I see or I hear some gunshots or something like that. So at the end of the day, like the excuses are irrelevant. This is what you signed up to do and you didn't do your job. If we come to work and don't do our job, we up out of here. Cuz what do we need you for? So you wasted your taxpayers money by not doing what you were supposed to do. And you cost your taxpayers more money cuz they had to pay for funerals. Yeah, and counseling for their children, right? And other services that have to be rendered. So your one silly decision because you were too scared to do your job caused a lot of people a lot of hurt and pain for a lot of years. You'll get another job. It won't be in the police, well, depending on where you go, because you know you can just jump from police department to police department. But you'll get another job. Those people will never get the, their children back. Those children yeah. will never get their friends back. Those children will never forget that this happened to them and that the police who they trust who come and give them lectures and teach them things didn't protect them at the very moment they were supposed to. So boop, I don't feel bad for him. Yeah, yeah, 100%, that's a great point. Okay, really fast, I wanna make sure that we get to this last topic in this hour. So why don't we jump into this right now? The Missouri House of Representatives has started off the year by addressing one of the chief concerns of their constituents, women's bare arms. They're against them and it needs to stop. So they've revised their dress code for female legislators to make sure that they're appropriately clothed and covered up. Representative Peter Meredith raised this on Twitter saying, yep, the caucus that lost their minds over the suggestion that they should wear masks during a pandemic to respect the safety of others is now spending its time focusing on the fine details of what women have to wear, specifically how to cover their arms to show respect there. And so there had been a debate Based on last year's session about some of the, the female legislators not dressing up to the standards of their, I'm gonna guess, uh, male critics. And so previously, the dress code had allowed women to wear dresses, skirts, or slacks with a blazer or sweater, along with appropriate dress shoes and boots. So, pretty specific limitations on what you can wear. The current rules make women legislators wear a second layer over a dress or a top with many legislators preferring to wear shawls or other apparel. So are they not merciful? They're letting you wear a shawl now. However, they're also forcing you to wear the shawl or something that will cover up your sinful, sinful female arm flesh. This is it, I'm, I, like, I had to remember for a second what year it was, because possibly I had been thrown back in the 1950s or something. I did spend a little bit of time in a DeLorean last night, but I think I made it out into my regular timeline. No, it's 2023 and these are the debates are going on. AB, what do you think about this? <laughs> no, no, we're gonna get pulled oh, in the about, air. I'm about, to, I'm about to get in trouble, right? It is 2023, enough of coming against women because you can't control yourself. Enough of attacking women because you don't have nothing else to deal with in the House of Representatives. The Republican Party spent so much time stealing power that they didn't spend enough time coming up with legislation they should really actually deal with. Leave these people alone. Keep your eyes to yourself. If you can't handle the fact that them women on that floor look good, I don't know what to tell you. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Did those women come to do their job? Are they comfortable? Cuz don't nobody say nothing to y'all when y'all suits be wrinkled, when your socks don't match, when the tie don't match the suit. McCarthy, I need you to wear a wave cap or something for this little piece in the back cuz you out here looking like Dennis the Menace. I'm sick of it. So if we are gonna make some rules, <laughs> let's put the rules in place for real, for real. Leave them alone, it's ridiculous. Is that is that merch? <laughs> that you're wearing right now? This is merch. Okay, so boom. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where's that available? It is available on legallyhype.com. There is a nice. shop like on it. the website. You can get your shirt. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I'm going to try to get Thanks. that put onto the list of approved attire for uh, the House of Representatives in Missouri. For now, though, you it should. wouldn't be acceptable unless accompanied by a shawl. Anyway, no, uh, stop policing people's clothes. I'm not going to say that I don't have preferences or whatever. I don't often do the show in mesh tank tops anymore. But it but it's all it's just it's just cloth. Like, can we stop pretending that there is like baked in divine merit to certain types of clothing? 
Donald Trump wears suits, that doesn't stop him from being a fascist, okay? Maybe the clothes aren't the most important thing. Anyway, that is unfortunately all the time we have for our first hour of the show. Thank you everyone for watching. There is more in the aftermath though, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Damage Report. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, John Adarola. I'll see you soon.